Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. 12,600 XRP holders are demanding their day in court because they are under attack by the SEC, whose mission it is to protect them, but they're not protecting them, are they? No, 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 we know better than that. And so these 12,600 12, XRP holders are being represented by attorney John Deaton, who himself is an XRP holder. And um, he he is really just bringing it. Uh, he, I just, I, I'm almost at a loss for words. Like, don't, don't worry, I've, I've, I've always got a ton of words. Like, I, I do not shut up, so don't, don't worry. But uh, just the amount of work he put into this filing, uh, for those of you that are, are to this point unaware, uh, John Deaton is seeking to intervene in the SEC versus Ripple case. And so just the other day, he officially filed his motion to intervene. And this thing, I printed this mofo up and it's 36 pages. You hear that right there? That is dead tree right there. I printed up all these uh, these dead tree innards uh, so that I could mark them up with pen and highlighter. Uh, so that I could, so that I'd, uh, you know, know specifically what I thought were some very interesting points within this document to share with you. Now, frankly, the whole thing is is highly interesting, uh, certainly to me and probably you, because if you're listening to this channel, you're probably hyper interested in what's going on with Ripple and XRP. Uh, but the video would be a little bit too long if I, uh, if I, if I literally read the whole thing. And so I did print this thing up, and um, I highlighted a bunch of bunch of spots along the way that I think you guys are going to find the most interesting here. And frankly, it, it's refreshing because uh, it's infuriating and infuriated as this whole process has been with the SEC going after Rif Ripple nonsensically, and ultimately um, as a result attacking XRP holders. That's effectively what they're doing. It's just so refreshing to see somebody on our side uh, bringing the fire here. And, and, and making it known to the judge that we are not okay as XRP holders with what the SEC is doing. And it is completely irrational, nonsensical, and completely outside of what the SEC's mission is supposed to be to protect investors here. Um, I do want to be clear at the outset here. I don't have a, a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast just like you uh, who en enjoys, in this case, though, so this might be the part that's a little different to you. I run a YouTube channel talking about Ripple and XRP and crypto uh, because it's a fun hobby. It's a fun thing to do here. Um, so so here we go. I, I So anyway, like I said, I got this document printed up here and uh, I, I read the whole thing here. And I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share with you a few thoughts from the beginning. I, jot, I jotted down a few notes. And then I'm going to run through this whole thing, and I, I highlighted select portions that I think are the most interesting, just my humble opinion right here. Which means it's the right opinion, damn it. And so, can, can we at least start by noting the following? The fact that this is happening is super duper rare. And I have talked about this on the channel before, but to, to like hold this document, you're hearing the dead trees right there, you hear that? That's the dead trees. I'm holding this thing in my hands right here. And like this is a representation of just how far the SEC has gone off the rails. It really is. You know, typically in these cases, uh, the because uh, mind you, the SEC's mission again to protect investors, right? Normally, the investors are on the side of the SEC. And I remember seeing in an interview, um, John Deaton, Attorney John Deaton. He may have been on. I can't remember where it was. It may have been uh, on on the chain, the YouTube channel. It, it might have been. I feel like it is. I could be wrong. But he, he said at least one time that I can recall that uh, when he first filed this suit, he was actually anticipating that uh, XRP holders were going to view him as the enemy. Because typically, frankly, when the SEC brings one of these suits, uh, the people that uh, the SEC is purporting to protect feel like they're being protected. That would be uh, much more usual, let's say. In this case, almost 100% of XRP holders uh, feels, and rightfully so, that they're under attack from the SEC and their army of asshat lawyers. That's the sound of the army of asshats marching right there. Marching asshat. That's exactly what they sound like. And so to see this, that says something. <laughs> um, and so check this out too. And this, this is fascinating to me. So consider that the purpose of this document, it's to, uh, you know, this motion... It's uh, it's to persuade the judge to persuade the judge that XRP holders uh, represented here by by John Deaton twelve thousand six hundred plus of them 
uh, should be allowed to intervene, right? And that's specifically what this is designed to do. And and um, I can only imagine how much time Attorney John Deaton put in to, to just manufacturing this damn thing. Like, this is, this is intense here. I'm very impressed by this. Um, and, and so I'm going to highlight the specifics um, a little bit later in the video because there's a portion where John Deaton does address the, the rationale for why. And I do want to talk about that. But I wanted to mention at the outset, like, just understand, the purpose of this is to say, hey, judge, we deserve a seat at the table right here. And I think he did a great job articulating that case. Now, um, and there's a point also. Um, I watched a video by attorney um, Jeremy Hogan, and he made the following point, and I wanted to share this with you, too. Uh, basically, regardless of whether or not the judge allows intervention, the damage is done. That's effectively what Jeremy Hogan said. He said, hey, look, she'll see that XRP holders were harmed. That's how they view their situation as being harmed by the SEC, right? And and so typically, again, that's not what you expect when the SEC is coming out, you know, purportedly protecting the little guy, right? So take this out. So let me, let me delve into this thing. If you, you can hear me. Moving some dead tree around right here. Look at these sweet, sweet dead tree innards. Oh, yeah. There we go. Marked them all up good. All right. So here in the preliminary statement, check this out. John Deaton wrote the following. By failing to distinguish specific prior sales and distributions by Ripple from present-day XRP, the SEC has put the property of XRP holders at the heart of this case and positions its interest at the complete opposite end of of the spectrum from that of XRP holders. Ding, ding, ding. He's hitting the nail on the head, and that is what's rare about, a huge piece of what's rare about this. And I, and he goes into great detail, which I'm gonna be highlighting here. I can't remember if that's what's up next. Let me fast forward a little bit further here. Yeah, he <laughs> here you go. He's talking about in this, this section here, page five. XRP holders con contribute to the XRP ecosystem. I love how this is spelled out because I wouldn't expect somebody like uh, Judge Annalisa Torres to know um, I mean, I'm sure she's making herself aware. I don't want to, I'm not trying to act like she's just, you know, being irresponsibly ill-informed at this point, like she's the judge, but I'm just saying I wouldn't have expected her to know the, like the level of detail being presented. I wouldn't expect her to know about this. And frankly, it, to this point, given that we're pre-trial, it's not been articulated by either party, not, not the SEC. And that's not going to surprise you, but also not articulated, vast majority of it, not articulated by Ripple because the interests of Ripple are a little bit different. And there's some overlap. I'm not going to pretend that there isn't, but their interests are different. And actually, John Deaton talked about that in what he wrote up here, too. And so check this out. This is what John Deaton wrote. From 2013 to present, XRP holders have been utilizing XRP and the XRP ledger for multiple purposes, creating value and utility for XRP. Undoubtedly, some XRP holders purchased XRP for the purposes of speculative investment just as they have purchased Bitcoin and Ether. Some XRP holders are simply users of XRP and the XRP ledger, utilizing XRP exclusively in their capacity as consumers. Now, as consumers, XRP holders utilize XRP as a substitute for fiat currency for everyday purchases at Walmart, Amazon, Target, and millions of other businesses. And by the way, my fellow XRP YouTuber, James Rule XRP, um, he highlighted that, like, he took a picture of his debit card that he uses, it, which was issued by cryptocurrency exchange Uphold, and he took a picture of that, and he's like, uh, hey, just so you know, like, I'm, I'm buying crap at Walmart and other places, and, he, you know, you, you don't typically do that with a security. <laughs> definitely, so, the, just, and, and it's just, the SEC's pretending like this actually isn't a thing. Um, and and I'll, this would be a side thing, so I'm not going to, like, I could go on a whole other just video with a different topic with this, but... There are tax implications for purchasing stuff with XRP, and that is not fair or just, in my opinion. You know, I, I asked James uh, James Rule XRP about this. Uh, we were messaging uh, back and forth a little bit. I'm not going to divulge stuff. Not that there's all like super secret stuff between us, <laughs> but but I did I did ask him. I was like, so uh, or no, actually, I take that back. This wasn't in a private message. This was public, so it doesn't matter anyway. But I asked him. I was like, so. Uh, what about the uh, the tax implications of this? And he said something to the effect of, yeah, my accountant's basically pulling this hair out. <laughs> but see, it shouldn't be like that. Like, that's not fair. If people want to be able to be, be using this as money, well, they should be able to without every single um, transaction being a taxable event. But at least in the United States, it is. So that would be a whole different conversation. But I, I just wanted to mention it. And it's my channel, damn it. I do what I want. All right, moving on now. Back to what John Deaton had to say here. 
Um, <clears throat> XRP is utilized for direct payments in XRP for over 500 shopping markets, 300 internet service providers, 500 crypto services, 30 tourism businesses, and the list grows weekly. Now, let me just ask you right there. Do you do that with your Apple stock? I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess no. And, in the, and look, like at some point in the future, maybe you see such a tokenized world where you start to get into that. But um, if we get to that point, fine, let's have that discussion. Because maybe the tax implication based on usage should vary. Fine. We can have that discussion. But either way, this, it should not be treated the way that it is. Um, anyway, and then so anyway, he continues though, because there's a lot more utility. Check this out. Some XRP holders utilize their XRP as collateral in order to secure loans in fiat currency. Some XRP holders use their XRP on XRP TipBot to donate to charities and other organizations. Um, and uh, several, several known companies and applications are using XRP. And so think about this. If XRP is deemed to be in and of itself an actual security, like people, this utility will be stripped from the people. SEC, look, the SEC, they do not have our interests in mind. And John Deaton's absolutely correct. And the 12,600 plus XRP investors that he represents absolutely deserve to be acknowledged and they deserve to intervene in this case. So uh, as, as far as whether or not that's going to happen, don't know. Uh, even Jeremy Hogan, he's like, I don't know. I don't know. But he also said, you know, the damage is done at this point. John Deaton has made it clear that, uh, and, and this should be a strong indication to the judge, like something is amiss here, this is not normal, but he's made it clear the damage is done. On, on the, let's see, it's harmed the SEC's case, and I say thanks for that. And I genuinely, like, I could not be more thankful uh, because it's clear that what the SEC doing is not in the best interest of XRP holders. The XRP holders say that. So, sorry, the little asshat army here. Uh, <laughs> Y'all dumb messed up, son, I'm just saying. Um... All right, next part of this, where was I? Yeah, here we go, check this out. Some XRP holders are developers who use XRP operationally within their business uh, business model. Some XRP developers utilize the XRP ledger's decentralized exchange for uh, the digitalization of different assets, such as stocks, bonds, and commodities. Some XRP developers have created consumer products such as the Sum Wallet, which utilizes the XRP ledger to store multiple cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP. Some XRP holders acquired XRP not as an investment, but as a payment for goods and or services rendered. Now, pause right there. If you're a merchant that's accepting XRP as a form of payment, for whether it's for a product or service, do you have an investment contract with Ripple, the company? Can you logically argue that? No, you backwards assets. <laughs> It really grinds my gears, guys. It really grinds my gears. Some XRP holders receive XRP as micropayments for providing content on YouTube, Coil, and other media outlets. Yeah, try... Because, look, we're talking about with Coil. Streaming money to content creators. Or can, can you do that with your Apple stock? I'm thinking not. Thinking not. And then there was this headline. Page 7. The SEC charges Ripple. The SEC charges Ripple, but attacks XRP and XRP holders. And I'm not going to read most of the section, but... Even just the headline is enough right there, and you know why. I've talked about the reasons ad nauseum on this channel, but check this out. Under the section, John Deaton wrote the following. The SEC is alleging that any sale or transfer of XRP by any entity, business or individual, is a violation of Section 5 of the Securities Act. In attempting to meet Howey's common enterprise prong, the SEC absurdly claims that because quote, XRP investors stand to profit equally if XRP's popularity and price increase, end quote. All XRP holders entered into a common enterprise with Ripple. This claim is ridiculous because the same statement equally applies to Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, or even gold or silver investors. The language utilized by the SEC in the complaint is both reckless and dangerous as it could be applied to not only the to not only to, to cryptocurrency, but every commodity. The SEC's claim that XRP itself is a security per se is not an implied or suggested claim. The SEC actually asserts that the very nature of XRP itself makes it a security. So pause right there, and I'm not going to explain the Howey test in this, this uh, video. I'm just going to assume that you guys know what that is. If you don't know what the Howey test is, 
Google it, H-O-W-E-Y, Howie Test, just Google Howie Test SEC, you'll, you'll find it. Um, but it's it had to do with orange groves, and just, just did the SEC back in the day argue that the very nature of oranges themselves <laughs> make, makes, this a, makes them a security? <laughs> can, you, can you freaking imagine this? Like, I'm just sitting here trying to squeeze some orange juice. That's a security, ma'am. But I just want some delicious orange juice. Uh, well, ma'am, that's a security. You have to register it with the SEC. Like, what, the, what the hell is that, guys? It's like crap. And so that's why it says, the, this is a quote. They said, the SEC said, the nature of XRP itself makes it a security. Oh, this really burns my biscuits, guys. It's just so ridiculous. Uh, so anyway, John Deaton continues. Ju Judge Netburn quickly recognized this outlandish claim and questioned the SEC regarding this novel and dangerous theory when she proclaimed, quote, Presumably under this theory, then, every individual in the world who is selling XRP would be committing a Section 5 violation based on what you just said, end quote. See, it's not just about Ripple. It just isn't. They, look, you think the SEC won't won't come after us more specifically in the future and exchanges? Oh, I think they would. Oh, absolutely, I think they would. John continues. If the SEC is successful in its claims against XRP, the SEC would have the authority to regulate a vast number of non-parties, including digital asset exchanges, developers, vendors, ordinary users, and retail holders of XRP. This would dramatically affect the entire secondary retail market for XRP and possibly all of cryptocurrency. Again, John hitting the nail on that, which is exactly why I've been saying forever, and John's been screaming it from the rooftops on Twitter. That's for damn sure, and every, everywhere anyone will listen. This is an attack not just against Ripple. Yes, it's starting with Ripple here right now. Um, maybe you wouldn't even say necessarily start. It's continuing with Ripple right now. There are nonsensical attacks prior to this, I suppose. But but uh, but the entire crypto asset class in the United States is going to be under attack. I'd say is under attack right now. You can see even recently, I've been talking about on the channel, Library has been attacked, LBRY and their LBC coin. Um, and so check out this. This has to do with requirements to intervene. And this is what John Deaton wrote. Um, intervention as a right will be granted only if, uh, and there's four parts here. One, the motion is timely. Well, I think clearly. It's done. It's the, he's within the, the, the time restraints of what was required by the court, so presumably not a problem. Number two, the applicant asserts an interest relating to the property or transaction that is the subject of the action. Clearly, that's the case. We're talking about XRP or specifically. Number three, the applicant is so situated that without intervention, disposition of the action may, as a practical matter, impair or impede the applicant's ability to protect its interest. Well, think about that. John Deaton, we went to great lengths to, to um, cite it, which is why I highlighted in this video here, this latest moon number hot, 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 hot jam. Uh, there are so many interests here. Uh, you can think about the not just Ripple, but cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, developers building on top of the platform, any entity, like uh, it, all the entities that I cited. I, I, I cited a bunch of instances in which there are use cases, and you can imagine the number of parties right there. So those interests are not being um, adequately um, protected or made known in this in this these court proceedings outside of John Deaton uh, intervening on behalf of the 12,600 plus XRP holders. And number four here, the applicant's interest is not adequately represented by the other parties. And oh, it most certainly is not. Let me fast forward a little bit here because he broke down in pretty great detail exactly why uh, the SEC... Uh, and as well as Ripple is not acting in the interests of XRP holders. And uh, to me, it's like truer words have never freaking been spoken. Uh, one second, let me fast forward, fast forward. Turning pages here. You can hear the dead trees right now, right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> I like this. Page 24. The SEC does not adequately represent the interest of XRP holders. Check this out. The law is well settled that if there is no investment intent, uh, intent a transaction does not fall within the scope of the uh, the securities laws. And so, yeah, so clearly here, not every single transaction could logically be argued to have some sort of underlying investment intent. But anyway, here's a quote. When a reasonable purchaser is motivated to purchase by a consumptive intent and not for purposes of making a profit, the SEC has no interest to protect under securities laws. 
Um, clearly, the SEC is either aware of XRP holders' use of XRP or they are choosing to ignore such use for litigation reasons. The SEC, think, that's power. Can I just pause and acknowledge how powerful that is? Because it's certainly true. And I've been bitching up a storm about that on this Moon Lambo channel right here. The SEC is, I think they're lying. Because I don't think they could possibly be so ignorant and so stupid. I think they made themselves uh, aware of as many facts as possible, including all of the actual use cases for XRP. And they're pretending like they don't exist, to the de which is to the detriment of you and I, XRP holders. John continues now. The SEC repeatedly categorizes uh, recategorizes XRP holders as speculative investors incapable of developing independent utility and contributing to the overall growth and development of the XRP ecosystem. The SEC claims that XRP holders, quote, ultimate goal in seeking to intervene is for XRP to become available again for trading on digital asset platforms so that movements may buy and sell XRP as a speculative investment, end quote. This statement alone proves that the SEC fails to truly understand or appreciate the threat to XRP holders' interests that the overly broad and vague allegations contained in its complaint against Ripple and XRP holders have caused. There are literally hundreds of businesses and developers independent of Ripple and its executives utilizing the underlying technologies of XRP and the XRP ledger. Uh, many of those developers and individual individuals and uh, small businesses have been slowed or halted due to the allegation that today's XRP itself is an investment contract and thus a security. And then he notes also, it is well established that XRP's price is not correlated with the efforts of Ripple, but instead the price of Bitcoin. Exactly. And so outside of rare instances like uh, the SEC spooking the market saying that XRP is tied to Ripple and then resulting in the price of XRP crashing, outside of that, XRP is not responding to Ripple's news. In fact, people in the XRP community have been bitching about that. Many have. M m many have. That, uh, hey, what's all this good news surrounding XRP, why doesn't this count for a hill of beans? It follows Bitcoin, guys. It just does. It just follows Bitcoin here. Uh, check out this. Defendants do not adequately represent the interest of XRP holders. I think a lot of this is, is pretty clear. I don't want to go through this intensely, but I'll, I'll note something that John Deaton wrote here. Ripple's lawyers cannot be expected to focus their attention on distributions of XRP made by entities not associated with their clients. That's pretty obvious, right? Right? I, I hope so. I mean, I, I mean, I can't imagine the a judge disputing that. And so I think that's all I had as far as how to, yeah. So this video is probably a little bit longer than I intended, but um, I, I just want to make sure I covered a lot of the stuff that was like the meatiest to me, but there's so, so much more uh, to, to what John Deaton. So uh, my hat is off to John Deaton for putting that together again. I can only imagine how much time uh, it took him to actually craft that thing and then double, triple check it. And then with the amount of information that he's collected just to make that all possible, uh, it's it's truly astonishing here, and I, I just I gotta tell you, John Deaton deserves the praise from everyone in the XRP community. He's been getting it, and he deserves it. Um, so I'm thankful. I, I, I'm willing to bet you listening to this are as well. So now what we got to do is just sit back. Uh, the SEC is going to have a chance to respond to this. I don't recall the exact timeline for that um, off the top of my head. It may be a few weeks or so from now. Uh, I want to say at some point, maybe the first half of May, something like that. Uh, and then after that, we'll just we'll just see at some point we'll hear something from the judge as to uh, whether or not uh, an intervention is going to be allowed. And, and we don't know for sure. But again, even if not, I think Jeremy Hogan made a good point. Uh, damage has been done to the SEC's case, and I'm happy to hear that. But still hoping for the best, hoping that there's going to be some sort of representation by uh, John Deaton and all the XRP holders that he's representing. But I will wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.